All right, let's do it. Um, so the, I just wanted to also start by saying the goal of why we're here. The, hopefully what we're trying to do here is just discuss, it, discuss the basics of what outreach and engagement is. This is a um, rapidly developing field in the United States. It's become um, a new uh, market for jobs. There, there's, mm -hmm. also, there's a huge sort of um, increase in the interest around outreach and engagement around documentary films. And so there's um, all sorts of m new money flowing into that space in the US and also that's also trickling out into Europe as well um, in a little bit slower pace. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay, I, didn't want to say <laughs> I couldn't be the one to say it. Um, but um, it's, all, it's all happening really quickly and I think it, you're gonna be hearing a lot about this moving forward if you haven't already. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a primer about what all this means. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what Andy is doing as an example of this kind of work and also how Nicole um, and Britt Doc think about this kind of work and how they're supporting this field already. Um, so I'm gonna start with a, just a quick video about what the Fledgling Fund does. All right, here we go. Ooh, that's not the beginning. <laughs> I get re-inspired just seeing little clips of all the films that I think um, are, are changing the world right now. Um, all right, so, but how does all that happen? Um, that's, it's easier said than done. It's not sort of a, if you build it, they will come situation, and if you just put a good film out into the world, people will start taking action and the world changes. There, there actually is a whole lot more to it than that that you have to build around the film. And so um, I think about it as the impact continuum. So three things that sort of have to happen in order to achieve um, social change. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the three things that go into this continuum. And I think of it as a continuum because they're not linear. Um, it's, not, it's not sort of a, you know, one thing leads to the next. They all are feeding each other. So keep that in mind. So the first one, you all know. You all know what distribution is. Um, you have, if, you, if you've been in the film world, you understand that distribution is, is just what it means to put your film out into the world. It's everything from you know, broadcast to theatrical to festival to community screenings, all the ways that your film goes out into the world. This, is, this, is, this you know. Um, the next one, though, is outreach. And this is a word that's um, often confused with the next word, so I want to be really clear about the definition here. Outreach is the way that filmmakers tell the world about their film. So it's building your audience, it's getting butts in seats and eyeballs on screens, and that's outreach. It's, it's in the, in the non-film world, that's, that's marketing, that's, that's um, advertising, that's communications. Um, it's, it's building your audience online, offline, however you do it, it's building your audience. Um, the next one is audience engagement. This is, this is the fledgling fund's sweet spot because this is, this is when you get your audience to go from passive to active. So this, this moment, this audience engagement moment starts, although we can, we can talk a little bit about how this is not true, but audience engagement starts at the moment in say a theater or wherever your, your audience is viewing your film and the lights come up, right? It's that moment when, you're, when you are sitting in a theater and you re realize for the first time that the 300 or so odd people around you are all feeling the same emotion and you all wanna do something about it. 
And, the, and I think you've probably all been in the theater when this happens, because it happens all the time, when the first person that raises their hand at Q&A says, oh my God, what can I do to help? You know that moment, right? That's the moment of audience engagement. <clears throat> when, you get them, when you get your audience to move from a, a viewer of a film, <coughs> excuse me, of the viewer of a film to engaged with the issue, unrelated to the actual film. Related because it's what brought them there, but totally connected with the issue on its own as well. That's the sweet spot. So audience engagement is what we're really talking about here. You've already built your audience, now how do you get them to do something about it? Um, and so, like I said, all of these are um, not linear. They all feed each other. You can start your outreach before your film is done, so before distribution. Your distribution often um, is kicked into high gear when your outreach and engagement are, are, are working well because the more people that are talking about your film might get you new distribution opportunities. They all feed each other. Um, and they're all, every, each one of those three things happens in order, has to happen in order to make social change. So you can't, you can't separate the three. It's a, it's a tag team. They all go together. Um, so if we're all kind of clear on the definition of that, any, any questions about just those three, those three things and how, what they are? Okay, perfect. Um, oop. So I'm gonna, we're going to look at another quick video. It just is going to reinforce um, the, those three things and, and what they do. Hold on. You know, we know what the, the process looks like, but what's the first step to figuring it all out? Um, so I think about, it, think about it as a series of questions. So the first question that I always um, give to our filmmakers that are thinking about this process is, what's the point? What do you want to do? What's, what's the overarching social change goal? So this is, this is not, I want to get it to as many people as possible. I want, them, you know, I want the world to see my film. I want to, I wanna, you know, I want my Aunt Sally to see it. This is what's your social change goal. Um, and so the, one of the ways that I have, some, sometimes people get stuck on that because that could be so big. That could be, I want, I want to end climate change or I want, I want world peace. Or that could be something really measurable and tangible and something that you can actually, you're setting yourself up to succeed. And all of those things are really important because you need something you can actually work for. Um, so one of the ways that I think about it with our filmmakers is in 10 years from now, if you were going to close your eyes and think about 10 years from now, you, you just put your film out into the world, what's going to help you sleep at night? And what's going to help you to know that what you did mattered? What's going to help you feel like this is a success when you look back on this in a decade? And so, you know, you have to, if you think about it in, in those kind of realistic terms, like what's going what's gonna to help me sleep at night kind of thing, um, that's, that's the way I think about it. So if you, all, if you all can just think about the film that you're working on and you look back and think, my film mattered because, and you're able to finish that sentence, that's your social change goal. Um, so 
one of the, the other way that you ha that's really important to think about when you think about your goal is, where's the movement now? Um, so really, it's a very, very deep understanding of um, the, the, the social issue that you're working on now and what it needs to get to the next step. So where is it at now? Is it, is it at a place where the world doesn't even know this is an issue yet? You know, something, some sort of um, disease or something that people don't even talk about um, because it's, it's just, just no one's ever reported about it or talked about it. Um, or is it something that we all know about, but we're just not taking action on, or we're not taking the right action on, or not enough of us are? So where is the movement right now in the public consciousness? You have to understand that before you can create your social change goal. So that's the first question. Um, once you know that, then you can think about your second question, which is, who are your target audiences? So this is not as many people as possible. I, almost every filmmaker that I talk to says, I want, I, I want everyone to see it. That's, that's the goal, right? That's the point. Um, and of course you want that. But, and that's, that'll, that'll feed your financial bottom line, of course, and that will feed your other bottom lines. But when you're talking about your um, social change bottom line, there are people that are most useful to helping you achieve it. That's who we're talking about here. It's the people on your pathway to change. If this is your social change goal and you have to kind of climb a ladder or a mountain to get there, who's along that path? Who are the, who are the change makers that you have to get to in order to achieve change with your film? Um, so when you think about um, your target audience, I, have, I often have filmmakers create sort of an ecosystem um, of, of their target audiences. This is, not, this is not about saying, you know, my target audience is you know, 18-year-old males from, from London. You know, it's not, a, it's not about a specific demographic, necessarily. It's about um, sort of ecosystems of groups that somehow connect and relate to one another. So that's sometimes easier to visualize. So um, as, we, as we look at the visualization of it, um, I call it sort of an audience ecosystem. And so when I, when I put this together, the idea is that each of, these, each of these groups of people in some way are on that pathway to change. So um, I'm just going to kind of cruise through these pretty quickly, but for, for whatever the issues, let's, let's, call it, let's call it climate change, okay? Um, ultimately, we're, we're going to need policy change. Um, that we can't, we can't deny, that, deny that. So elected officials has to be part of my target audiences, so I add that. Um, but within, within each of those elected official groups, we can talk about the people that are already on board, the pro-environment politicians, but we could also talk about perhaps the pro-business politicians that would rather not talk about climate change issues and are probably not voting in favor of these issues. So you have to really think about both and how to message to both of them very differently. Um, and then you can talk about your pro-business pro groups, so lobbyist groups or um, coalitions of businesses, whatever it is. So those are perhaps... Um, on paper, those are, those are, um, oh, <laughs> that's my husband, um, just going to bed in New York, um, awkward, um, okay, <laughs> I think you did tell me to sh turn off Skype, right, um, all right, good night, honey, um, okay, so, <laughs> The pro-business groups, perhaps on paper, um, are are not with you on the issue, and so um, that's a good one. A good one to think about. But you also have to think about um, perhaps your your business majors in different colleges. So how do you how do you reach people before they're entrenched in the issue? So you and you think about um, so all of these things sort of overlap, and you're thinking about your small business owners that maybe do care deeply about the issue, but haven't yet felt engaged in the issue in some way. Um, so then your next, your next group might be college students. Often, often a really smart target audience for most of the issues that you're working on because they're um, still forming a lot of their opinions. They're, they've got time on their hands, and they're often easily pissed off. And so you can really get them engaged in your movement. Very few, very few films that are successful don't engage college students. They're sort of, sort of classic activists. Um, and so when you think about college students, you have to think about, all right, you've got your business majors, you've got your environmental science majors, those two messages are completely different. So um, thinking about when you do screenings for those two, those two groups, maybe your question, question and answer session at the end is completely different. 
Um, and, you think, and you have to think about, too, um, online, what's going on online in college groups and, and all of those things, and how do you reach the environmental clubs at colleges. So you can, can, the point is that these, the smaller circles represent how you can kind of break down all of these audiences really, really deeply. This is just sort of a, a really. Um, <laughs> unbelievable. Um, I don't want to go switch it off because then I feel like it's too late. Um, <laughs> the college students. Um, moving on. Um, and then you've got your environmental. <laughs> Get real quick. <laughs> oh, fine. Jesus. Um, that's amazing. Okay. Um, okay. Environmental. You got you. The point is <laughs> coming up with affi affi affiliations and how people are already grouped in society, um, and so that's how you reach people. So finding them online and offline in groups that they're already forming, um, and so you can just c see that you can continue to break this down. And so a lot of the criticism that, that social issue documentary filmmakers get, one of the things that you hear most often is you're only preaching to the choir, right? You're only going to reach people that, that already know, you're, they already know what's the point. You're not going to reach anyone and change anyone's mind because they're not going to come see your film anyway. Um, I get that 10 times a day. And so um, the way that I think about it, I think about it in two ways. One, I think we're more complex than that. I think that we you can't just lump people into a believer and a not and not and a non-believer. That's unfair because aren't we aren't we a little bit a little bit smarter than that, a little bit more um, nuanced than that. And so instead of choirs and non-choirs, I think about a ladder instead. And so if you if you think about a ladder, the top of the ladder being sort of the the peak of activism. So you are you are you are doing everything you possibly can, d dedicating your life to this social issue. Um, and at the bottom of the ladder, even off the first rung of the ladder, is people that don't even know about the issue, let alone have engaged with it. Perhaps the first, the first um, sort of step on the ladder is their first understanding of the issue. And so when I think about how do you move people and, when, and how, when, how people react to film, I don't think of it as choir or non-choir. I think about what if you can just get someone one rung up the ladder, right? If, if they already know about it, what if they never took action. They never thought the, of themselves as an activist on the issue. So, you know, I call myself an environmentalist, but is there always something more that I could do? Absolutely. I probably left a light on in my hotel this morning or whatever it, if, whatever it was. There's always one more way that you can engage people or deepen their connection to the issue. So when, I, so when people talk about choirs and non-choirs, I urge you to demand that they think a little bit deeper about the issue and that we're not that, not that shallow and that we can, we can be, be a little bit more nuanced about that. Um, and so when, when you think about your target audiences, um, these, are, these, are all, these five groups are all really important to think about. Um, your noisemakers. Who are the people that are just going to be loud and obnoxious about your issue as soon as they see your film? Maybe those are college students, whatever it is. Who are they? Who are they? Who are the people that you can piss off the most? Um, your natural allies. So those are the ones that we talked about. So those are the ones at, at the top half of that ladder, right? So those are, the, those are the people that are already working on the issue and have deep partnerships already, have deep networks that they can reach out to, um, are already believers, but they need a new story with your film. Those are, the, those are another really important group to reach. The opposition. So how are you reaching the opposition? How, how are you finding the people that don't necessarily um, believe in your issue? How are you finding them in new ways? So perhaps the, when we looked at that ecosystem, perhaps those are the business groups at colleges um, before they really form their opinions on, on the subject. Um, so reaching the opposition in some way. The armchair support, um, that's what most of us are on most issues, right? We care about it, we say we care about it, on paper we care about it, but we have yet to do anything about it. That's an amazing audience because they're, in some ways, your natural allies because they're like, yeah, of course we believe in that issue. I love the film, it was great. But they have yet to do something, so you have the power to get them to take their first step on that issue. That's an incredible gift to the movement, is moving people from armchair activists to real-life activists. Um, and the undecideds, um, don't forget about them, who eh, never really thought much about the issue or, or just 
literally can't decide. Maybe they think about it all the time, but I have no idea where they stand. Um, what an incredible way to give them a new story with your film, perhaps introduce them to a new part of the issue in some way. Um, that's an incredible audience as well. Um, okay. Um, the next question to ask after you know your audience is coming up with a goal for each of those audiences. So when you think about your, um, your elected officials, you probably have a very different ask or goal than your college students. Maybe you want your college students to just go nuts on Facebook and just raise hell about the issue. Maybe you want your elected officials to introduce a new bill into parliament or whatever it is. Um, you, have, you have to really think about the ask for each one because that, that moment at a screening when someone raises their hand and says, what can I do to help? If you don't have the right answer, you've lost them. That's your moment. And so um, thinking really deeply about who is going to be in your audience and what the ask is for each of those audiences. Um, so once, once you know that, um, you have to think about how that message is delivered in some sort of unique, creative way, hopefully. Um, because probably most of the social issues that your films are covering, there's already a movement out there. You are, not, you are not sort of the first person to ever talk about this issue, for most of you, for most of you. Um, but so it's really, really important to not recreate the wheel here. Probably there are already organizations or activists or groups of people working on the is this issue. So it's really important to tap into and learn from what they've already done and what has not worked or what they are doing and is working instead of recreating your own path to the top of that mountain. I, it's so many filmmakers do it, and it is such, such a frustrating thing to watch because it, it totally isolates you and alienates you from, your, from the organizations already working on the issue, um, and, it, and it just com is a total waste of time. So figuring out what's already been done and how it's delivered. Andy's going to talk a little bit about a unique delivery method, so I'm not going to go into a lot of that, but it's essentially using the right tools, meeting your audience where they're at, and giving them the right kind of creative, new, fresh ask that's actually some sort, of, some sort of added value to the movement. Um, and so once you, once you figured that out, um, you can th when you're thinking about the ask, this is, there's, there's science behind the ask, right? Behind um, social science, behind activism, and what gets people to really be engaged. And so this is just a, a quick look at, the f the f across the top are five different ways that people um, change a behavior. So they either do something new, they reinitiate something that they've already perhaps done, they increase something that they've already done, they decrease something, or they stop something. So those are, the f those are basically the five kinds of asks that you can make. Um, and social science basically tells us that the first two, um, and perhaps the, first, the, the middle one as well, are the best. So asking something of someone in a positive way, instead of, instead of telling them to stop something, you want to tell someone to start something. That's a much easier ask, and you'll have a much higher success rate. I'm not a scientist. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to show you my experiments on the subject, but there are plenty of experiments that, that show that people react much more positively to positive asks. Um, and what, you're, what you want to go for, too, is when you look down the vertical axis, you're looking for a one-time behavior. So an example of that, let's say initiate, so this first box would be initiate a one-time behavior. That would be like signing a petition. That would be the ask, right? So I've got this issue, sign my petition. That's great. But what if that ask also had a duration? So what if it was, um, so what if it lasts, it wasn't just a one-time thing? So maybe something like that would be, um, do a, um, make a donation $20 a month for a year or something to the issue, or volunteer for the year, volunteer every, volunteer every um, Christmas for this issue, or whatever it is. Whatever it sort of is lasting and not just a one-time thing, they can do at the theater and never think about it again. So you're getting a little deeper there. And then the lasting change, that's where you want to be. You want to be as low on this, on this chart as you possibly can. So a lasting change might be something like, Instead of buying that, that tuna fish that kills dolphins, I want you to always buy this tuna fish that is safe and, and sustainable and eco-friendly. So that would, be, that would be a lasting change in initiating a new behavior. So science tells us that you want to be in this bottom left quadrant when you're thinking about your ask. And, and so that's a, that, that I would suggest working very deeply with organizations that are already working in the movement to figure out where, how you get to that, that corner. Um, okay, 
So work within the existing movement. We've already talked about that a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna, I don't, I don't wanna go through each of these ingredients of a successful campaign, but um, I'm gonna stop for a second. Any questions on that chart or anything, anything that I've said so far? Are we good? We're good, okay. Um, ingredients of a successful campaign. I'm just gonna kind of cruise through these really quick, but they're important to think about, and I would urge you, if you're thinking about building a campaign around your film, to just jot these down and make sure that you spend a little time thinking about each of them. Um, a timely issue. In some way, does your film tap into an issue that's already going on, to a, going on and there's sort of a public hungry, hungriness for it? Um, are they... Are they curious about the issue in some way? Is it, is it timely in some way? Does it matter politically and socially right now? So those are often the best stories that, that can really move people to action. That's okay, go ahead. Yeah. Local versus international pressure on whom and what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that goes back to your target audiences in, in, for the most part, right? It's, it's, it, it's hard to be super specific because all of you have a different issue, but when, when I'm talking about target audiences, that's for you, that would be, you know, perhaps, I, I'm not, depending on the issue, I don't know, but perhaps it's um, the, where the mining is happening, it's, it's officials there, I'm not, or maybe you're talking about a, about a divestment scheme or in, your, in your home country, I'm not sure where, where the pathway to change is, but absolutely, everything I'm talking about is, can be both local and global. Um, there's, there's, no dis, there's no distinction there to me. Um, it, it, your audiences can be wherever you want them to be, wherever they should be. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Is this an international film or is it your own audience, time, time? Yeah, I mean, that's, there's no right or wrong answer there. You know, I mean, it's, it totally depends. It, to, to me, your story should come first. You're, you should be making the story that is sort of the most powerful, the most, um, the most um, compelling, that has the right characters, and be thinking about the social change piece um, after you create a beautiful film um, a, a, and compelling characters, all of it. And then when you think about your, how you're making the film, um, your target audiences can be sort of anywhere. I mean, that, that goes back to your distribution method, right? How, do you, how are you getting your film to the right people and then how you're communicating and getting the right people into the theaters or into the community screenings or, or broadcasts or however you're doing it? I'm not sure that I'm answering your question, though. There's no right or wrong answer here. You're absolutely right. Local, global, all of these, all of these things apply to both. How'd I do? <laughs> Give me something. Yeah, I mean that, that Yeah, I th I mean I think that's such an individual thing. It's hard to say if I don't know the film, right? You know, if it's it completely depends on the on the each individual story. Help. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk afterward. Okay. Good. Um so a realistic budget. We don't have a ton of time to talk about budgets here, but it, we, can't, we can't have this conversation with talking about how much all this costs, right? Building a website, hiring someone to do your social media. But it, it can, you can have a massive budget if you want for this kind of work. But you can also do it on a shoestring and be really scrappy about it. 
Um, and so just being realistic about how much funding you're gonna be able to raise to, to build your campaign. I'm not talking about your film budget. I'm talking about your campaign budget here. It's a whole other thing you have to think about, which I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, is, is thinking about the staffing that you need to do this and the tools that you need to do it with, whether that's a website, whether it's a mobile app, whether it's just social media, or whether it's just total offline word of mouth, whatever it is, um, being realistic about the budget that you need. Um, a committed team, all of these things are just things you need to think about. Um, this, is, this is often not you that's running this campaign, it's, it's someone else. Um, an appropriate timeline, is this gonna last two months or, or two years? Um, the right tools, again, this is um, figuring out how to meet people where they're at. So if, you're, if your target audience is college students, perhaps social media is the, is the right tool. If, you're, if your target audience is um, seniors in Poland, perhaps social media not your, not your best tool. So figuring out how, how to meet your audience where they're at. Um, figuring out who your nonprofit or, or, or corporate partners are. Um, and then I'm gonna cruise through this pretty quickly, but how do you know if you're successful and, and what you're doing matters? Um, at the Fledgling Fund, we, we use this um, model. This is on our website if you wanna take it. Um, so we look at, first of all, first and foremost, was it a compelling story? Um, did, it, did it get good reviews? Did people sort of react and were moved by the story itself? Did it build awareness? Did it get a lot of attention? That's how, we, that's how you can judge awareness. So that is, um, you know, did it get a ton of press? Were people talking about it, the issue in new ways? And then the, the next one is engagement. So that's that sweet spot when people move from just knowing about an issue to doing something. So that's essentially, are people doing what you tell them to do? Are they signing the petitions? Are they donating, are volunteering, voting, calling their elected officials? Whatever it is that your ask is, are they doing it? That's your engagement. And you can measure all of this. Um, stronger movement. We look at that because we know that every one of your films um, contributes to a larger movement on the issue. And so how is your film strengthening the movement? Are you bringing new people to these organizations? Are the organizations able to get more funding, more volunteers, more, do more, more attention, more social media? How is the movement stronger because of your film? And then ultimately we look at social change. Did you solve the issue in some way, you and your partners? Um, so that's how we look at um, how we measure all of this, this work. Um, and so in order to, to do that, again, I don't have time to go through all this, but quantitative and qualitative. So it's important to think about not just how many Facebook likes you got or how many um, online views you got or whatever it is, but to think about to recording the qualitative of the film that you're, of the campaign that you're building. So how are you, um, as a filmmaker, collecting their emotional responses and reactions to your film? So maybe that's using your iPhone or something to record people as they walk out of the theater and ask them, ask them will they, it, are they moved in some way? Will they take an action? Figuring out how do you record the stories of the people that saw your film and how they've reacted. So that's, the point here is just, don't just think about um, digital analytics here when, we're, when you're talking about evaluation, but think about the stories that go along with your campaign. Um, one last video, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Andy. Um, but this is just an, an example, just a sort of a quick um, hypothetical how a film can inspire change. 